we're gonna build our host pools across our three different regions that we've been working with in the US, UK South, and Japan West. These pools will be made up of session hosts built off of different images from Windows 10 Enterprise, Windows Server 2019, and Windows 10 Multi-Session. We also need to cover the different deployment methods here for the pools, and that would be the Azure Portal or ARM Templates version, PowerShell, and the Azure CLI so that you're ready for anything the exam can throw at you. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. So let's build out our host pool in Japan West. Here in the WBD Admin Center, we'll just click on Create a Host Pool at the top. And then you've got all the basics here, your subscription, appropriate resource group, name for your host pool, and your region. And right underneath the location is a note about your WVD metadata. This is what keeps track of all of that extra information that WVD needs to work as a service and where that metadata will be stored. We're going to store the metadata in East US since storing in Japan or anywhere else in Asia as of today is not an option. For our host pool type, we'll be selecting personal because these are for our developers. And then our assignment type, you can choose automatic or direct, but we'll leave it at automatic. Since all of the virtual machines will be configured the same way in the pool, we're not handing out special admin rights or anything like that. So we'll hit next for our VMs. Our naming prefix, we'll use VM-WTH-D-JW. That tells us that this is a virtual machine in the What The Hack project in our development environment in Japan West. Then for our availability options in Japan West, availability zones are not yet available, so we'll use an availability set. So we'll give it an appropriate name following our naming convention, avset-wth-d-jw, and then we'll leave the fault and update domain options as default. And then we have our image type. And these particular VMs are going to get Windows 10 Enterprise Edition, and we're gonna pull it right from the Azure Marketplace, so you can leave that right on Gallery. And in the Image dropdown, select Windows 10 Enterprise version 20H2. Next, we have our virtual machine size. And the right size, of course, depends on what your users are doing. So these users are going to be using all of the Office software, Teams with AV redirection, Edge or Chrome, whatever they prefer, Acrobat Reader, Notepad++, and VS Code. And those last two are gonna be supplied by MSIX App Attach. So we're gonna start these users out on a standard D2S V3 with two CPU cores and eight gigs of RAM. That should be okay, but if performance turns out to be an issue, we can always increase the size of the VM later on. So the number of VMs that we need. This goes back to how many users are in your particular use case. In this case, it's about a thousand users. And since these are personal desktops, it is a one-to-one -one relationship of user to VM. Now, this is a good point for me to bring out the fact that if you try to deploy a thousand VMs at a time, it's going to take quite a while. And the reason why is because of the Azure API limits in a subscription. And if you're building things off a of custom image, then you have even more things to worry about because a custom image only allows you to deploy 20 VMs simultaneously. Now, if your image is stored in the shared image gallery, then you can add multiple replicas of your image so that you can deploy the number of VMs that you want to. So keep those limitations in mind. In this case, because we're just building out a example lab here, and I wanna validate that everything works for these users before we open the floodgates to everybody, I'm just going to provision three VMs. For OS disk type, I'm okay in a personal host pool starting out with standard SSDs, and if performance becomes an issue for the test users, then we can up it to premium. That's different for how we would do pooled host pools, where you definitely want to be using premium disk because of the simultaneous users, and you don't want that OS disk to be thrashing any more than it has to. Not to mention the fact that those users will be using cloud cache, which is going to hit the C drive more than normal. So we scroll down for our network stuff and we gotta select the proper network that's already located in Japan. We do not want an NSG because we've already deployed that in a previous video. And then for specifying our domain, we'll set that to yes. And the name of my domain is msazureacademy.com. I'm not going to add the optional organizational units path. I'll just let everything join to the computer's container. Then I'll add in my domain creds and the creds that I want for my local admins. And then we'll hit next for our workspaces. 
Now we haven't talked a whole lot about workspaces because today there's really not a lot to them. What they do provide is the presentation layer for all of your app groups. So any app groups that users are members of, they won't see any of it unless those app groups are connected to your workspaces. So we'll select yes at the top and then click to create a new workspace. And the naming convention we'll use here is WS-WTH dash D dash JW and then hit next and let's add our tags and these are the same tags we've used in this entire video series for our application cost center environment owner and support now before you hit the create button at the bottom go ahead and click the arm template link and we'll scroll down a little bit till we get to the host pool resource right underneath that you'll find an app group now when we walk through the portal deployment there was no place to pick an app group of any kind but you do get one every time you build a host pool and this is a desktop application group and every host pool today can only have one desktop application group which in the case of our personal pool is just fine because that's all we want so go ahead and save this template if you like and then go ahead and create your host pool and our new pool is complete our vms are online and we are ready to go in japan so we've done the portal we've done arm templates let's switch over to vs code because now we need to look at azure cli and powershell so i've just got a text file that i'm writing the command in here and then i'll place that into my terminal and this is the azure cli command it's az for azure and then we need the resource provider of desktop virtualization we are working with a host pool and we want to create. Now, if you just put that much of the command into your terminal, see what happens. You're gonna get a failure, but you will get a try this that'll give you all the different parameters that you need to be successful. So taking that code and then plugging in the right variables. So we've got our resource group name and our name for our host pool. Our location will be in the East US. Our pool type will be pooled. This is a breadth first pool, which means that we're going to stack the users across all of our VMs equally rather than depth first, which would be to stack 10 users on VM1 before we put anybody on VM2. We've added a description and a friendly name. And then notice that we have a personal desktop assignment type. Now you might be thinking, why in the world would you need that? Because this is a pooled host pool. Well, I hear what you're saying, but it is required for the command to function. And you can just leave that set to automatic. If you are building a personal pool and you want it direct, you would add that here as well. Then we have our registration info. Now this is to create that token that allows session hosts to join this host pool. You don't have to include it in this command and writing the command could be a little difficult. So I thought I'd explain it. We've got the expiration dash time equals, and then we need a time code. This is year dash month dash day dash time. And the time can be quite specific. This is at 1400 hours at the first minute, 54 seconds, dot a whole lot of numbers, Z. Then it's space registration dash token dash operation equals update. So take a breath and then add your tags and you format those as tag name equals tag value. And I've got all my favorites for the application, cost center, environment, owner, and support contact. And then for bonus points, I thought I'd throw in the custom RDP properties. This is something you could configure later as well, but why not do it here? And since in this pooled host pool, they'll be using Teams with AV redirection, we wanna make sure that we capture our microphone and camera, but we're only gonna allow them to use one monitor. So just go ahead and run your command and then that'll be done in just a moment. The difference between the Azure CLI and the Azure portal or ARM template deployment that we looked at is you will not be getting an application group. So we'll have to go back in later and create our desktop application group and any remote application groups that we need for this pool. And for our third host pool deployment method, let's talk about PowerShell. And we'll format our PowerShell command to do exactly what our Azure CLI command did, just so you can see that the only thing different here is a little bit of syntax. So it's new dash azwvd host pool. We give it the resource group name, name of the host pool, location in this case, because UK South does not support WVD metadata, we're using North Europe. But by the time you watch this video, maybe that's updated. Our host pool type is pooled because this is for remote applications. And just to switch it up a little bit, our load balancer type will be depth first. We'll have a max session limit of 30 users on one VM. 
We've got our description and friendly name. And then this one is probably the most different of all the parameters. And this is the preferred app group type. Whereas in the Azure CLI command, it was personal desktop assignment type. In PowerShell, you've got two choices, desktop, or if you're doing remote apps like we are, you wanna use rail applications. Then we have our registration token information. The operation is update, but the expiration here is a little bit easier because it's done through a PowerShell expression that's already been written for you. We add our tags just like you would for any resource through PowerShell. Then we have custom RDP properties. And just for good measure, we've thrown in the validation environment type is false. And now that all of our host pools are complete, we can turn our attention to the remaining session hosts. And we'll do these in a couple different ways. Go to the UK host pool and just click the registration key at the top just to verify that we have a valid registration token, which of course we do because we just created it. And then go to the session host on the left. At the top, click add. And then notice on this first screen, you really can't change anything because we're building hosts into an existing pool. So hit next. And here's where we add all the same details for our VM that we did in our personal pool. But this time for our images, we're going to leave image type on gallery, but we're not going to select an image from the dropdown because this host pool needs our custom server 2019 image that we made in our last video and image gallery far, far away. So go check that out if you missed that step. And over here, click the see all images link. And then you've got these two options at the top, Marketplace and My Items. Select My Items, and we've got two more options, My Images and Shared Images. Now for the moment, just click on Shared Images, and there you can see the Windows 10 multi-session image that we made using the Azure Image Builder. We'll come back to that one in a minute. Go back to My Images and select our custom Server 19 image. And the rest of the build is exactly as it was before. So I'll skip ahead to where the VMs are done. And we've selected one of our new Server 2019 VMs that's in the UK. This VM has already been joined to the domain. And now we're gonna scroll down here and go to our extensions. And extensions, as you'll remember from our last video, is how we can add extra code into our machines to make it do basically whatever we want. And we're gonna use this method to add FS logics and configure it for these Server 2019 systems. So click Add at the top, and we've got a lot of extensions that we can choose from. Scroll down the list until you find the custom script extension, select that, and then hit Create at the bottom. Click on browse and then we need to select the storage account where this particular script we want to use is located. And just click through till you find the right file and then hit select. And then just add any of the arguments that your script needs to run, like I have the dash profile path. Hit OK at the bottom and that will deploy your extension and set up and configure FS logics for you. Now that script can be found up on my GitHub and I've got a link to it down in the resources section below. And with our UK host pool complete, let's turn our attention to the US host pool that needs our Windows 10 multi-session image. So over here is our shared image gallery where that image is currently stored. And what we need here is the image's resource ID. So let's click on the image definition and then at the bottom here, click on the image version. And over on the left, we wanna click on properties and then right there in the middle, you can see the resource ID. Go ahead and copy that. And then I've got another link in the resources section for an ARM template deployment. This is again out of my GitHub. And when you run that, it'll take you right into the Azure portal to deploy an ARM template. Now, the one thing that you do need to update inside the ARM template is this section here, the image resource. You can see I've got all these ARM template functions here, and that's because I leave this template up on the internet so that all of you can just deploy the latest Windows 10 multi-session image with Office already pre-installed. But we wanna use our image from the Azure Image Builder. So we're gonna erase these four lines of publisher, offer, SKU, and version. And in their place, we wanna write an ID, and the value for this is going to be the resource ID from our image in our shared image gallery. That's all you need to do. Everything else is good to go. So hit save at the bottom. 
fill out the template, and then I'm just going to build three VMs for the same reason we did three in our personal pool. This is just my example lab, and before I would ever build out enough VMs to serve 2,000 users, I would have a smaller POC just to make sure that everything is configured exactly as I want it before I scale up. So within another few minutes, those VMs are all finished, and now we can have our users do their acceptance testing. And we've just got one more thing to do in this episode before we wrap it up. Let's go back to WVD, and we're going to do Start VM on Connect. And this will be a quick one. As of today, Start VM on Connect only functions in personal host pools. So let's go to our Japan host pool. And then on the left, click on Properties. And then right there where it says Start VM on Connect, change that to Yes. And the last thing that we have to do is add all the custom permissions so that the WVD service has the ability to start our virtual machines. And I've covered all this in a previous video where I talked about Start VM on Connect, so go check that out for all the details. And I've already added my permissions into Azure, so I'll just go up here to Access Control and then click to add a new role assignment. Over here in the role selector, I'll type in the word start and there is my custom role. And then I'll assign that to the Windows Virtual Desktop service. And I know many of you have asked how many more videos there'll be in this series because you're waiting for the whole thing to be done before you go and take the test. And there's gonna be probably four, maybe five more videos depending on how I can overlap some of the remaining topics. So the things that we'll cover in the remaining videos are application packaging with MSIX AppAttach. Now that that's generally available, automation tasks for management and build out. I know we did a little of that in the host pools, but there is a lot more to know for the test. Another episode covering everything in WVD monitoring, disaster recovery, and then user experiences where we're gonna get into configuring Microsoft Endpoint Manager, Endpoint Policies, and more. Thanks for joining me in this episode. Hope it was a help to you. If so, click that like button, as well as the subscribe and share this video with others. Catch the rest of our AZ140 series right over here, as well as the latest video up here at the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us, and I'll catch you next time. Happy learning.